Pat Novak, Samuel L. Jackson, a TV personality, starts an episode of his show The Novak Element by saying that every country in the world except for the United States has droids from the global corporation Omnicorp for high security. The action moves to Tehran, where one Omnicorp worker, Rick Maddox, Jackie Earl Haley, gives red asset bracelets to Kelly Perkins, one of Novak's reporters, and camera crews as they watch big droids and other robots scan people in the area. A mother and her son, Naveed, Nur and Gulam Gauss, watch the droids work from inside a property. Naveed's dad, Arash, played by Mayasam Motezadi, takes a group of suicide bombers outside so they can film themselves dying live on international TV. They start their attack, but all of the bombs are killed by the droids. However, they are able to kill some of the EM-208 droids on their own. Naveed runs out with a knife, and one of the ED-209s on watch shoots and kills him. All of this is caught on camera. Novak goes on to praise how the droids handle the situation and says that Omnicorp CEO Raymond Sellers, Michael Keaton, has the right idea to push for using these droids in the US, but Senator Hubert Dreyfus, Zach Grenner, is against it and has passed the Dreyfus Act to stop this kind of law enforcement. Novak asks in the end why Americans are so afraid of robots. Alex Murphy, a detective with the Detroit Police Department played by Joel Kinnaman, goes to a meeting with Chief Karen Dean, played by Marianne Jean-Baptiste, in Detroit. John Lake, Daniel Cash, and Andre Daniels, K.C. Collins, two other police officers, are also in her office. Dean tells Murphy what he did wrong the night before. Murphy and his partner Jack Lewis, Michael K. Williams, had fought with men working for crime boss Antoine Ballon, Patrick Garrow, killing six of them and seriously hurting Lewis. Lake and Daniels are upset that Murphy is getting in the way of their investigation into Vallon, but Murphy says that the fact that they haven't been able to catch Vallon after two years of looking into him shows that they are dirty. Murphy tells his story after Lake and Daniels leave the office. The story of Murphy is told in bits and pieces. He and Lewis have been working secretly to stop illegal gun shipments. They meet a dealer named Jerry White, Jordan Johnson Hines, while pretending to be buyers, but they start to think he is selling dirty guns. They scare Jerry into telling them that he works for Antoine Ballon by acting like they think he is an undercover cop. Murphy and Lewis check the serial numbers of the guns being sold and find something shocking, they are guns that should have been locked up in the evidence room. This means that Valen is paying police officers to work for him. Murphy and Lewis go to a restaurant to meet Valen, even though they don't think it's a good idea. Lewis says that they need help because Valen's men might use them as targets, but Murphy thinks that calling for help will let Valen know what's going on. The meeting gets off to a good start. Valen and his right-hand man listen to what Murphy and Lewis have to say, and they seem to believe that they are who they say they are. Unfortunately, just as they are about to close the deal, someone betrays Murphy and Lewis to Valen and lets Valen know by smartphone. Valen gets up from the table as soon as a few cars pull up in front of the restaurant and a group of shooters with pistols and submachine guns start shooting. Murphy and Lewis, who were pinned down in one of the booths, fired back with their guns. After a long fight in which several bad guys are killed, Murphy gets away by jumping through a glass window and into an alley. A couple of bad guys are waiting for him in the alley. Murphy uses a dumpster as a cover as he moves toward the bad guys and shoots at them. He kills two of them, but the last one runs away. Lewis is getting ready to follow Murphy when a bad guy who had been hiding in the kitchen jumps out and shoots him. He is shot in the right shoulder, but he is able to return fire and kill the bad guy. Murphy stays with him until an ambulance shows up, but Valen is able to get away. In the present, Chief Dean tells Murphy that he shouldn't do this kind of job without first talking to her. Sellers and Senator Dreyfus are testifying at a Senate subcommittee meeting in Washington, D.C., about using Omnicorp droids as police officers. Dreyfus says that if a machine killed someone, even a child, it wouldn't feel anything, and Sellers reluctantly agrees. When Sellers goes back to Detroit, he meets up with Liz Klein, Jennifer Ely, and Tom Pope, Jay Baruchel, who work with him in marketing. Sellers wants to put a person in a machine to protect the streets because he knows that more than half of the country's people won't support robots doing that job. At the Omnicorp Rehab Center, a guy with robotic arms is being cared for by Dr. Dennett Norton, Gary Oldman, and his assistant Jay Kim, Amy Garcia. Dr. Norton gets him to try them out, even though he is afraid to at first. When the man starts playing the guitar, he and his wife can't stop smiling. The man's feelings start to get worse, which would mess up the method. He slows it down, but then he says that he needs to play with feeling. Then, Sellers calls Dr. Norton away. They, along with Klein and Pope, look at possible candidates for the man in a machine program who are amputees. All of them are former police officers, but Dr. Norton and Sellers turn them all down because of their physical or mental health. 
Also, we find out that Lake and Daniels, the two cops Chief Dean sent out of her office earlier, are the ones who told Valen about Murphy. When they meet Valen in a bar, he gently tells them that they should have told him sooner. He thinks about paying Murphy to get Valen to behave, but Daniels tells him that's not a choice because Murphy is going to be stricter with Valen from now on. The two detectives think it would be easier to just kill Murphy. At first, Valen doesn't like this idea because he'll get more attention from the police. However, Lake and Daniels tell him that they'll be the ones investigating him. So Valen tells one of his men to put a bomb in the wheel well on the driver's side of Murphy's car while Murphy is at the hospital with Lewis that afternoon. Alex goes home to his wife Clara, Abby Cornish, and son David, John Paul Rudden, who is 10 years old. After putting David to bed, he and Clara start to get close, but then the car alarm goes off. Alex goes to turn it off because he's afraid it will wake up David. The car alarm is a trap that gets him out of the car and then blows up the car from a distance. Alex is badly hurt and has fourth degree burns all over his body. Both of his legs and one arm have to be cut off, and he will probably be deaf and blind. Dr. Norton and his medical team see Alex as the right person for their project. They convince Clara to let them use Alex for the project, even though she worries about what kind of life he will have. Three months later, Jack and his wife are at a party with Clara and Alex. They dance to a song by Frank Sinatra. This turns out to be a memory that Norton and Kim are looking at as they finish Alex's new mechanical suit. They wake him up, and what he sees shocks him. He grabs Norton around the neck and throws him to the ground. As Alex runs out of the room, Kim tries to stop him, but Norton tells her to let him go. Alex keeps running until he jumps over the facility's wall and runs through a field before they can stop him and bring him back inside. Back in the lab, Norton talks to Alex face to face and shows him that the only parts of him that are still whole are his head, heart, lungs, and brain. Alex is shocked by this, so he asks for him to die. Norton tells him that Clara signed the permission forms, so if they let him die, all their work will have been for nothing. Alex later has a live chat with Clara. She's glad to hear from him once more. After that, he reads about the attempted murder in the news and is disappointed that, despite what he thought, Valen is still out on the streets. Lake and Daniels have stopped the investigation into the attempted murder, while Jack sends words of support to his fallen partner. Alex is being trained and will start to learn about his work. Maddox shows him that his suit can react to a threat by pulling out a gun if it needs to. Alex is taken to a room with a model and put next to a simple EM-208. As seen on a screen, the robot reacts to threats faster than Alex, who hesitates because he doesn't want to hurt people, but also uses better strategies. Maddox says he wouldn't buy that for a dollar as a joke. After Alex's training on the simulator is done, he goes on to training in the field. He is tested against Maddox, who is wearing an armor, and other robots. Alex moves around the robots firing with ease and shoots them all. He also ties up Maddox just for good measure. Norton and Sellers watch the whole training process. Norton tells Alex that even though he thinks he is doing these things, he is just following directions as he was programmed. Klein says this is against the law, but Sellers thinks it's fine for a machine to think it's a person. Alex is taken to his house by Norton, where he will meet Clara and David for the first time. David made a welcome home banner for his father. Alex comes home, and Clara and David are both surprised by how different he looks, but they still hug him. There is a public press meeting to show the city the new and improved Murphy. Norton and Kim can see on a monitor how Murphy is feeling as they put information from the police database into his head while he is getting set up. When he starts to think about the time he tried to kill someone, he feels too much and starts to have a seizure. Dr. Norton finds him, and Klein and Pope put pressure on him to find an answer in a few minutes. He and Kim decide to bring Murphy's feelings down. When he goes outside, Clara and David are there waiting for him. David says hello to his dad, but Murphy keeps going with a blank face. Sellers and the mayor both put out their hands as he walks by. As soon as he walks out in front of everyone, everyone stops talking as he starts looking through the crowd for crooks with warrants. Thomas King, Dwayne McLean, who is wanted for murder, is in the crowd. This makes things worse. Murphy calls the man out to get him in custody. King starts to run until Murphy jumps into the crowd, shoots King in the back with a taser round, and knocks him down. Pat Novak uses the event as a reason for people to finally support this new program on his show. He says that King stood right in front of two cops, but they didn't recognize him. He also says that King has been wanted for rape, assault, and murder for six years, but Alex was able to catch him in less than a minute. So, people start to think differently about the Dreyfus Act. People in Detroit start to like Alex and call him Robocop. Though some are against this because they think that police work should be done by humans, not robots. Sellers, on the other hand, 
tells Dr. Norton to keep Murphy away from his family for the time being. At the police station, Murphy walks in as Chief Dean tells the other cops about several murder suspects. Murphy says he will help find a thief named John Biggs, who is played by Robert Thomas. He rides his motorbike around the city to check on things. He gets a few drug addicts who are totally high, and one of them tells him where Biggs' drug lab is. Murphy finds Biggs's lab and rushes in, shooting Biggs's thugs. Biggs tries to get away, but Murphy corners him. He tries to throw a grenade at Murphy, but he gets shot in the leg, which causes him to drop the grenade and blow himself up. A few days later, Alex is going to fight more crime when Clara stops him on the street. She begs him to listen as she tells him that David is scared and having nightmares because of what happened. Even though Alex seems to ignore her, he can't help but look at CCTV video a few minutes later and see reporters following Clara and David as she tries to take David to school. Murphy rides back to his house and checks out the crime scene where his car blew up. He does this because he realizes how far away he has become from his family. He looks at the security video from the blast and is even more upset to find out that David saw his body on fire, which scared, worried, and upset him. He makes up his mind to get rid of Valen for good. First, Murphy goes back to Jerry White, the gun dealer who first told him and Lewis that Valen was behind the gun trade. He finds Jerry and makes him get out of his car so he can question him. Jerry fights him at first and tries to avoid giving him answers. Murphy breaks Jerry's hand and forces him to tell him the name of a man on Valen's crew with whom he is in touch. Murphy is able to find Valen's building because he can look at the phone company's records. As Valen rides to the building, someone tells him that Murphy is about to show up. Valen tells his soldiers to get their guns. As an added safety measure, they turn off the lights and put on night vision goggles so it will be harder for Murphy to kill them. They start shooting at Murphy as he uses his motorcycle to blow the doors open. During the barrage, Murphy gets shot in the suit and has his visor broken, but he kills all of Valen's surviving gunmen and saves Valen for last. After shooting Valen, Murphy picks up one of the dead soldier's guns and checks it for fingerprints. He finds Lakes and Daniel's prints. Murphy and Jack both go back to the police station. To prove that Lake and Daniels were involved in the bombing, he questions them and shows the meeting on every monitor in the station. Daniels tries to shoot Murphy, but Murphy shoots back and hits Daniels. Lake says that Dean was involved in both the shootout at the diner and the car bomb. He tries to kill Lake and then goes to talk to Dean. Before he can get her to tell him anything, Maddox shuts Murphy down from the building. Maddox tells Sellers, who is in his chopper, what is going on. In another episode of the Novak Element, Novak talks about how Murphy showed how corrupt the police department was, which is another reason why he thinks it's time to finally let the robots out on the street. While this is going on, Sellers meets with Maddox, Klein, and Pope to talk about Murphy's health. Klein tells the world that Murphy is in very bad shape in a statement. Sellers thinks that Murphy can be used as a symbol of a martyr to get people to feel sorry for him. Also, the Dreyfus Act is no longer in effect. Clara wants to see her husband, but she is told that she can't. Sellers sends Maddox and other goons to kill Murphy. He plans to tell Clara that Alex died from his injuries. When Klein gets to Clara's house, he takes her and David to HQ to meet Sellers. With the help of Kim, Dr. Norton sneaks into the place where Murphy is being held and tells him that Sellers sent the assassins to kill both of them. When Murphy wakes up, he kills the two bad guys before they can shoot at him and Norton. Murphy rides his motorbike to Omnicorp headquarters and gets help from Lewis, who has called the SWAT team to help. He tases one guard outside the building, which makes the other guards stop what they are doing. He flips his motorbike into the building, which makes two ED-209 robots notice him. They try to kill Murphy, but he makes them kill each other instead. In the chaos, a third droid gets caught and falls from a great height. Alex's left arm gets caught under it. As more droids come in, Murphy has no choice but to get a submachine gun and shoot off his left arm. He falls because the droids shoot at him. Lewis comes up behind him and stands there, giving Alex a chance to run. He is found by Maddox and another thug. Both of them are wearing red asset bands, which keep Murphy from shooting either of them. Before Maddox can kill him, Lewis shoots him in the back and kills him. He then kills the other bad guy before getting shot but not dying. Murphy looks at the cut and decides that it will not kill Lewis. Sellers is waiting for a plane while Murphy makes it to the roof of the building. Clara, David, and another soldier are there with him, as are Klein and Pope. Alex tells the last two to stop, and they do as he says. He tries to arrest Sellers because he tried to kill him, but Sellers is also wearing a red asset band, so he can't shoot him. Sellers points his gun at Alex, then Clara, and finally at David. This gives Alex the push he needs to go against his training and shoot Sellers. Sellers shoots back. 
Clara and David rush to Alex's side when Sellers dies. After a while, Alex gets a new suit that has been fixed. David and Clara are going to see him. As they come in, he smiles. In the last scene, we see another part of the Novak element. Once Norton speaks against Omnicore's program, the president has said that the Dreyfus Act shouldn't be changed. Even so, Novak is still in favor of robots. He keeps praising Sellers and criticizing Norton for being a reporter. Novak tells his audience at the end of his show to stop crying and get on with things. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like, share and subscribe button to my channel to see more videos like this.